Hey folks, today I'm going to talk about the power of dread. It might seem a little strange, but dread is actually one of my favorite emotions because it is a powerful emotion for understanding ourselves and understanding what it is we want in this world. Once I started learning about emotional literacy and recognizing the emotions that were existing in my body and talking to me via sensations, I realized that I very frequently experience dread. Dread means that you're anticipating something, but with apprehension and fear. For me, dread feels really heavy. I feel it like it's a literal weight on my chest. I feel like it's harder to breathe. And I'm also at the same time feeling kind of activated, like I feel when I'm experiencing anxiety or fear. And I think that's because Dread is trying to tell me a message and it's time to listen. The first reason why I actually love the emotion of dread is it is powerful information about something I don't want. When I notice myself dreading something, I like to take a beat and recognize what is it that I'm dreading? Am I dreading something because it's just an unpleasant experience? Or am I dreading something because of the thoughts and feelings that I have associated with this experience? Dread can be really powerful information around things we don't want. If we wake up every day with a feeling of dread about going to work, it's possible we need to look into, are we in the wrong job? Possibly even in the wrong career. Feeling dread about spending time with certain people is powerful information that maybe there's something going on in that relationship that we need to take a closer look at. Dread can be a message that says, I'm actually ready for something else in my life, but I'm feeling a lot of fear and apprehension about how I can make that change. In my own life, I noticed that I was really unwilling to sit with the feeling of dread because I had a meta thought about the dread that this shouldn't be there. I often thought that if I'm experiencing dread, it means that something has gone wrong. So it was really powerful for me to start to see dread as a messenger of information. When I wanted to learn how to sit with dread and be able to receive its message, I had to let go of any idea that learning this information would require me to take a certain action. One of the many teachers who've taught me about emotional literacy invited me to recognize the dread and recognize its message and make a promise to myself that it didn't mean that I would then be compelled to make certain changes in my life. If I noticed myself feeling dread about going to a certain place or doing a certain job, it didn't mean that I had to quit or end that relationship or burn some bridge behind me. I invited a spirit of curiosity and I invite you to do that too. If you're like me and you love to write, Writing is a great way to uncover how you actually feel and to recognize the message behind the emotion. And this works great when you're feeling dread. The other useful side of dread is that it gives you powerful information about what you do want. We don't feel dread about things that aren't important and charged with emotions. So if you're dreading something, you can ask yourself, what is the alternate reality version of this? What is it that I'm dreading? And what is it that I'd rather have instead? That's the thing that the dread is trying to tell you. This is important. Let's figure it out. This is the thing that the dread is trying to tell you. This is important to me. So what's on the other side of your dread? It's very possible that you've never been taught how to recognize and process an emotion. But I wanna mention that there's a lot of research that shows that emotions are temporary sensations. There's a lot of talk about how emotions rise and fall over a period of around 90 seconds to three minutes. I don't like to put a timeline on how quickly or slowly I process my emotions, but it is possible to move through the emotions in your body. And if you're curious to find out how, then check out this emotion processing guide. For specific feelings of dread, 
I've created a bonus releasing dread meditation and you can check that out in the link below. If dread is an emotion you experience frequently, then I invite you to also consider coming to work with me. I work with clients about developing emotional literacy and learning how to allow and process their emotions in order to help them live the life of their dreams. Dread can be information about what we do want and what we don't want in our lives but sometimes the emotion of dread is just brains being brains. As you develop your emotional literacy, you can start to recognize what sort of flavor of dread you might be experiencing. Human brains were built for survival. They were built to conserve energy, to seek pleasure, and to avoid pain. Occasionally, when I look deeper into my dread, I recognize that this is just my brain's survival instinct. It's trying to conserve energy. So whatever this thing is, it's going to require some of that energy. And my brain is saying, no, it'll be safer if we stay in the cave. I teach writing classes and I know that a lot of people struggle with dread of writing. So I like to remind my students that dread is often just your brain taking care of you, trying to survive. It says, let's conserve this energy because we might need it later in case there's a lion attack. Particularly when it comes to writing, a lot of times dread is actually a fear of what we are going to say to ourselves once we've done the thing that we're afraid of. For example, when you're writing an essay, a lot of students might feel dread of receiving their feedback and receiving their grade. But we're not afraid of words on a page or a score in the grade book. We're afraid of what we're gonna say to ourselves. We're afraid of the thoughts and feelings we're going to have. But the good news is those are totally within your control. What are you afraid you're going to say to yourself if you do this thing that you're feeling some dread about? Pretty much any time we do something that asks us to step outside of our comfort zone, dread might be an emotion that just comes along for the ride. Before I sat down to make this video, I was feeling a very mild sensation of dread and I recognized it's my brain trying to keep me safe, to conserve energy, and to avoid putting myself out there in such a way, like making a video for the internet. But this version of dread is not going to stop me because I know how to cultivate the kinds of thoughts and feelings that I want to cultivate in order to do the big things that I dream of doing in my own life. I like to take stock of my dread and use it as a tool to recognize, am I moving in the direction of my dreams? And other times to recognize, this is just the everyday dread that comes whenever I exert any kind of energy and I don't have to make it mean something about me. This relates to another topic that I've talked about a lot, which is why we procrastinate. Procrastination is another form of emotional avoidance. If we can learn to process our emotions, to sit with them and recognize the messages that they're trying to tell us without taking them so seriously that they rule over our choices in our life, then we become unstoppable. Thanks for watching and I hope you take a listen to whatever it is your dread has to say to you.